Thank you. It's a great pleasure for me to be back. Um, it's one year ago that I was standing on this uh, scene. Uh, we had just kicked off our IPO roadshow uh, for New Evolution. Uh, we went public in December of last year. And this was the first podium uh, we had on the day, on Monday, the November 23rd. Uh, so I'm really pleased to come back and tell you about uh, what we've been doing uh, during the year. And uh, we've executed a very important deal for the company uh, just one month ago. And therefore, most of my presentation today will be about our business strategy. Uh, but of course, there will be an opportunity to also talk about the science. So, um, first of all, of course, we are publicly listed. Uh, I will be making some forward-looking statements, and as always, these are associated with risk. So please pay close attention to that. You have a company overview here. Um, New Evolution has been around for quite some time. We just celebrated our 15th uh, anniversary uh, just a few days ago. Uh, we were founded in 2001. Uh, we have our operating facilities uh, in Copenhagen, uh, but we've been owned by Swedes, uh, mainly Swedes, uh, ever since 2004. Our major shareholders are SEB Venture Capital, SEB Utviklingsstiftelsen, uh, Industriefonden, and then the Danish-Swedish fund Sunstone Capital. Altogether, they own just about 72% of, of the company. Um, and we went public in December. Uh, we are listed on the First North Stock Exchange in the Premier segment, which means that we report according to IFRS. We do uh, the quarterly reports, we do uh, audio casts after our uh, releases, and you can find all that information on our website. So there should be a good opportunity to follow us very closely and you're always welcome to write us. We make replies to all shareholders that correspond with us. Nuvolution has a platform for doing small molecules. Small molecules are the ones you know from tablet-based medicines. We have a very strong platform for identifying such attractive molecules. It's a platform that we have patented significantly over the years. We have 200 patents that have been granted to the company and it's been an important element for our business strategy. We as a company, I think we are different from many other biotech companies because we have significant focus on how to uh, turn science into business. I'm quite pleased and proud about having uh, been responsible for the 15 out of the 16 deals that we've done in the company. Uh, we've realized quite some revenues, mainly while we were focusing solely on platform-based agreements. It's become more than 400 million Swedish kroner uh, already. But since 2012, when Industriefund joined us, we changed strategy to focus on the establishing of our own pipeline, focusing on diseases within cancer and uh, severe chronic inflammatory diseases. You know it from psoriasis, multiple cirrhosis, rheumatoid arthritis. These are re really severe indications in need of new medicines. We apply our platform, which is a very efficient platform for identifying tablet-based uh, medicines. What we uh, promised, uh, the promise that we brought to the market uh, in 2015 was over the years 2016 to, to 18, we want to deliver five to six business opportunities. And we'll talk more about what a business opportunity is. But for us, it's really turning over science into become business. Five to six over the next three years where three or four of these will be placed with partners in exchange of revenue stream and we will keep one or two programs for our own development so that we can mature the company and for it to become a valuable company. And we also have an ambition to uplist to the main market once we have the right market cap. Let me just uh, explain what the platform is all about. And we have a, a brief video uh, for you on, on that. Um, if you think about the way nature has identified different species that are really fitted into specific habitats. What nature did was it tested a lot of different species, tested many variations to find the optimal ones. Drug discovery is the same. We need to test many test substances in order to identify the best ones to become new medicines. And let me just run uh, the video and then uh, we'll go from there. <coughs> Thank you. 
Efter bildandet av vår jord och under de mest extrema förhållanden började organiskt liv att etablera sig. På den universella tidsskalan utvecklades nu liv med oerhörd hastighet. Elementen, förutsättningar, utmaningar trotsades av alla växter och djur genom att de evolutionärt kunde adaptera sig. Genom att testa talrika arter i mängder av varianter kunde naturen identifiera de bäst lämpade som adapterat sig till sin miljö. Genom teknologi har människan kunnat övervinna de begränsningar som är satta av naturen. Men upptäckten av nya mediciner för att bota eller hämma sjukdomar är fortfarande en av de mest komplicerade och kostsamma processerna i modern tid. I sökandet av nya mediciner söker vi att imitera naturen genom att testa olika molekylers aktivitet mot specifika sjukdomar i hopp om att hitta en eller flera molekyler med goda egenskaper. Tyvärr så kan de största läkemedelsföretagen med konventionella metoder bara testa ett fåtal miljoner molekyler. För många av de viktigaste och krävande sjukdomarna misslyckas dessa konventionella metoder helt och forskarna lämnas i blindo. Genom hårt arbete och stor innovativitet har New Evolution skapat en kraftfull teknologi för att snabbt kunna testa miljarder av molekyler. New Evolutions Chemerics-plattform utnyttjar naturens principer för att utvärdera ett oändligt antal av molekyler i jakten på att finna nya läkemedel. Tänk om att istället för att testa miljoner kunna testa miljarder av molekyler. Dina odds att lyckas kommer att öka dramatiskt. Med användning av konventionella metoder kan molekylsyntes och efterföljande testning fortsätta i det nästan oändliga. Det måste göras bättre och till en mycket lägre kostnad. Och man måste vara snabbare, mycket snabbare. Det gör vi på New Evolution med vår Chemerics-plattform. Testar vi miljarder av molekyler med en aldrig tidigare sedd hastighet. Att identifiera nya molekyler för tablettbaserade mediciner kräver en evolutionär teknologi. Chemerics. Transforming challenges into medicine. So this technology didn't come about just like that. It took us from 2001 to 2007 to really get it up and running in the labs and it took us a couple of more years before we could really produce true small molecules that can be used uh, for tablet-based medicines. We have used this platform in a number of agreements over the years and the attraction here both to the big pharma company as well as to us is we can test much more than you can do with any other technique. So this is like playing lottery. We have at least a thousandfold more lottery tickets than if you are a big pharma company. So we've done a number of, of deals over the years, uh, which were mainly platform-based agreements. We did drug discovery collaborations where pharma companies would come to us and say, we've tried everything we could for this specific disease target, but we are not able to find drug candidates. Can you help us? In those cases, we've been screening those targets, we've been optimizing the chemistry, and then we have handed over rights to the pharma partner. We've also had a couple of uh, technology licensing agreements that have been structured uh, in different ways. And all of this has so far given us just around 400 million Swedish kroner. So that's really nice, but it's not like we are satisfied. We think there's much more upside in this platform. Uh, what is good about this is that we know the platform works. We have used it in many partnerships with the big players. We know how to do business, but we think we can get much more out of it from an investment point of view, from the company's point of view. And that's the focus for us now. So if you look at the very bottom, you see program licensing. This is the classical biotech model. You start a project, you mature it, and at some point in time you hand it over to a partner and then your partner will, will pay certain uh, uh, sums for that. If you are working in oncology, so cancer and inflammatory diseases, the graph you see here shows you some average deal numbers, what to expect. So typically we can expect on the average 
double digit, $12 million up front, and a very nice milestone package, triple digit, $1 million uh, for out licensing of programs. So that's what we are working on. That's what we want to do going forward. The drug discovery collaborations in comparison, they are one tenth of this. So that's why we think it's much better to now focus on investing in our own pipeline using the platform that we have already shown works for making our own pipeline of good programs, hand over some of the program to partners, generate income, take some of the income, invest it in the programs we want to keep internally. So that's a, the bottom part of the business model today. Um, if we look at it from a risk perspective, because we look a lot of on, on the risk side of things, because the classical biotech company is associated with a lot of upside, but also a lot of risk. How can we do something about these risk factors? Well, one of the things few biotech companies talk about is the business risk. You have good data, you have a program you think is very valuable, but you don't have money in your pocket until you've actually sold it to someone. So you always have a business risk. What can you do to reduce the business risk? That's what we do in this risk-sharing risk pre-sale collaboration model, where we team up with a pharma partner from day one of the program. We will invest and take risk in the early part of the program, and then at some point the partner will take over, and then they will pay us some similar to what you see here, to get all the rights to the program. In this way, we're able to reduce the risk because we know we have a partner from day one. We just announced uh, one such agreement uh, at the IPO. We mentioned that we would like to do one or two within the 18 months from the IPO. And the first one is with Amgen. Amgen is a very uh, big biotech company or rather a pharma company. Uh, it's a collaboration where we will be working on a number of programs together. So this is a multi-program collaboration. We will be taking care of the early part, so we will use the platform, we will do the chemistry, the screening, the optimization, and then Amgen and New Evolution will work together to bring us to the candidate stage. That's where you're just about to enter into the safety studies uh, in animals and then bring it to the clinic. That's Amgen's obligation. If everything goes according to 100% to success, which of course it doesn't always do, but if it did, we could receive up to $410 million per target. It's a multi-target collaboration because we know we're going to fail in some of the programs. That's the nature of, of science. And by having more programs, overall, we have a higher chance of being successful. Should we be so lucky and so good, that we get all the way to the market, then we would also receive royalties on future sales, but that's, of course, many years from now. So for us as a company, it's about looking also at risk. The classical biotech company has maybe one or two programs that they push forward. It means that if they fail with these programs, then the company may uh, go bankrupt. We run typically 15 to 20 targets in parallel at different stages, really to make sure that we can afford to fail because we know we will fail in certain programs. And then we want to reduce the cycle time instead of waiting six, seven, eight years from your startup program until you actually hand it over to a partner. We want to hand it over to the partner after three to four years. In the engine collaboration, it may actually happen before that with the overall strategy of reducing company risk while also keeping upside, of course. We just touched briefly on the pipeline. Uh, we've decided to use the platform that we have in the areas of uh, chronic, severe uh, inflammatory diseases, in cancer, oncology, and also in a new field which is uh, termed immuno-oncology, where we try to reactivate a patient's immune response such that it can actually eliminate uh, the cancer. So we have programs at various stages, as you can see from very early on at the bottom to quite far. The most mature program is the Roar Gamma T program. You have it at the top. It's an inhibitor program that will most likely be developed for psoriasis as the first indication, but has the opportunity also to be broadened out into uh, other uh, severe uh, inflammatory indications. We are at the candidate stage uh, there. We are doing kilogram scale production of material right now with the aim of doing the safety studies, regulatory safety studies next year. And we're pushing hard also for partnering of this program. 
And the guidance that we have uh, offered to the public is that within the next uh, six months, we expect to hopefully have uh, that program uh, partnered. And for us overall, it's about bringing three to four programs up to this area where we think we can do business. We, can, we think we can do business because we know others are doing that. And then we want to keep uh, one or two programs for ourselves during the, the, the three years from the IPO. If we look at the, at the finances, as you can see, uh, net cash position at the end of the year, we have a broken uh, book year. So our year ends uh, on, uh, Ju June uh, 30th. Um, you can see we had uh, 200 uh, million Swedish kroner uh, in the, on the bank account, heavily supported, of course, uh, from the IPO. Uh, we had a loss of 85 million, so with this we have at least two years to execute the business strategy uh, that we have laid out without any deals happening. So we feel we are very well funded with a, a decent or moderate uh, burn rate uh, for the years to, uh, to come. Looking at the news flow, uh, looking at the at the at the uh, center of of the slide, what you see here is these risk sharing agreements. We already announced in 2015 we wanted to do these deals because this is a way of securing a partner early on, while also making sure we have a good upside in terms of the payments that we could hope to see from such an agreement. Uh, we did that in 11 months. Uh, it's the company's uh, 16th uh, deal. Um, and we believe that it can both achieve creation of shareholder value going forward. It could support these five to six business opportunities that we expect to, to, uh, to deliver. And overall, it lowers uh, the risk for, for us as a company because we already have the partner. At the bottom, you see uh, one to two uh, our licensing agreements. Uh, we are really pushing hard and we've been doing that in 2016. Uh, I just... Uh, took a few quotes from our quarterly report. Uh, we have a new quarterly report coming out on, on Thursday, so I can't really give you more than this. But we have ongoing negotiation activities with uh, multiple parties, and we are making the progress that we are expecting from such a negotiation process. So we have people that are looking into our uh, electronic data room, making sure that the data that we, we claim we have, that it's actually true, and we are in negotiations at the term sheet and contract uh, drafting level. So we expect and hope that uh, if we can achieve agreement, then uh, within the next six months, uh, this will be the first program that will be directly licensed from our own efforts. Then at the top, uh, this is what you will uh, see also more uh, of going forward. Uh, namely announcement from our pipeline. Uh, we have this Cytokine X program. We haven't announced uh, what the identity of the target is. It's a very exciting uh, target where there are antibodies today. Um, and what we are offering here is a small molecule. So instead of having injectables, uh, you can have a tablet-based uh, medicine. And we have achieved proof of concept in animal studies, and we did that uh, eight months after the uh, IPO. So we are extremely excited about this program, and this is a program that you will hear more about as we, uh, as we move forward. So let me just uh, summarize. Uh, we have a platform for doing small molecule drug discovery. It's faster than conventional techniques. Uh, we can test more molecules, increasing our odds of being successful. It's not a guarantee that we will be successful, but because we are running more programs, we have a higher chance of being successful. And it's such a cost-effective platform that we can afford to run these many programs in parallel and can afford to fail in certain programs because we're going to fail, we know that. We know how to do deals. Uh, we've done 16 deals, uh, several with uh, Big Pharma over the years. It's, uh, recently it was Amgen. In October last year it was Janssen. We have uh, Novartis, uh, Merck, GSK, Boring Ingelheim. So the Big Pharma companies are uh, well, very well aware of new evolution and, and, and what we do. We focus on uh, revenue generation. Our business model is a hybrid business model where we invest in our own pipeline while we will place certain programs with partners in exchange of revenues that can then be reinvested to build the value base of the company. And the guidance that we had uh, at the um, 
at the six, September 6th, uh, so in connection with the Q4 report, was one to two out licensing agreements and one to two risk sharing deals over the coming nine months at the time. And we just did announce one of these risk sharing uh, collaborations and the pipeline progress will be reported as we, uh, as we move forward. And that was what I had today. And I'm sure Markus has a number of questions for me. And afterwards, of course, uh, you are very welcome to uh, ask questions. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Come and sit down. Uh, the Schematics platform, the first business model for that one was to license out the right to use Schematics. And that way you generated revenues. But were you, or do you have potential cash inflows from those deals still? I mean, are you able, will you be able to collect uh, milestone payments from those deals? Yeah, I mean, we, 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 we still have uh, income. Uh, so we announced earlier uh, in the year, I think it was in February, we got uh, $2 million from a Novartis collaboration. Uh, we got an additional payment from uh, Janssen, uh, $600,000, uh, I think it was in April. Um, so we do expect that uh, we will receive additional income from, from our agreements uh, in the past. But if I look at it from a, a cash position, I think the, the new deals that we uh, are working on, I think they will uh, outcompete in terms of, of uh, expected income because it's, it's much more lucrative yeah. to develop your own pipeline and, and out-license it. Yeah. But do you focus any sales resources on the Kematics, old-fashioned license? Um, I would say uh, promotional-wise, uh, Whenever we meet a pharma company, we always explain to them what we do and why we can offer this risk-sharing collaboration uh, pre-sale model. They need to be convinced about the, the platform, but, but we've been around f for such a long time and we've worked with so many pharma companies that they, by now they are very well aware of uh, what we do and, and how we do it. Um, but I wouldn't say that we do a lot of uh, promotion for the old type of, of deal structure. Um, I mean, we have companies knocking on our door, it's both VCs, it's biotech companies mm. that want to work with us. Um, but, but we don't think we can do many of those old types of, of deals because they will tie up resources. Mm. And those resources are much better invested in, yeah. uh, in the uh, internal pipeline. So don't expect a lot of, of those to, to happen. Yeah. It may be one-offs here and there, but, but not, uh, not a lot. And also you, you designed the risk-sharing deal with Amgen, as you spoke about earlier. I was thinking that you mentioned the value, the potential value of a deal was 410 million US dollars per target. Yeah. And how, how many targets? Are yeah, I mean, we, we, we haven't announced the number of, of, of targets. It's a multi-target uh, collaboration agreement. So it's, it's, it's more than, than, than one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, I can't really give you more information than that. Uh, I, I mean, what we have said in general, these risk-sharing collaborations, we really don't want to have uh, less than five targets. Right. Uh, and the right. reason is that uh, we're working on, in many cases, very difficult targets, targets where the pharma company have not been successful at all. And I would say for those very difficult targets, um, about 30% or so, we fail. We find nothing. About 30% we do find something that is, but it's very difficult to, uh, to optimize it. And then about 30 to 40% we find something that uh, can be optimized, but will take some time to, to optimize. So we, we, we need to have uh, more targets coming in because it's otherwise, I mean, it would be too, uh, too significant an investment in just uh, doing the deal, the contract drafting, the negotiation, if it was just a one target mm. agreement. Mm. So the, on, on, I would say, in general, we aim for at least five targets. And you are the responsible part to, to screen, uh, find hits, and then optimize the hit. Mm -hmm. or, and then Amgen has the option to license the deal. Correct. And how, for how long time does this option run? <laughs> Yeah, so, so I mean, Amgen, of course, is very strong on the biology side, the disease side. They have the animal models for the specific diseases that they are interested in. We have the platform for doing the chemistry. Yeah. So we will be running uh, most of the chemistry 
in only the very early part of the biology, so testing if compound substances are active. And then Amgen will be doing uh, the animal studies and the more sophisticated, uh, so sophisticated work. Um, and the, the, the timelines for, for when Amgen may take the option and say we want to license can be anything from six months to, uh, to a certain time frame where they no longer want to invest in, in the program um, up to a certain uh, end stage. Oh, um, so there is no set? There is a set, there is a set, uh, there is a set um, end point. And if yeah. they don't license at that set end point, uh, then we keep all the rights to the program and we can do whatever we want uh, yeah. with the program. And will there be a penalty fee? If, or I mean, if, if I mean, that's the other, I, the overall idea with this kind of structure is we team up with you, we do the investment, we also expect you to be there once we deliver the results. If you're not there, yeah, then you have to, um, to compensate us. So the, we have those kinds of structures in, um, in these risk-sharing pre-sale uh, deal structures. Do we have any questions from the audience? Uh, no questions? Oh, yeah. This is happening in, in the laboratory. This is uh, wet chemistry and wet biology. It's real molecules in real test tubes that are screened in real fashion by a human being, taking a sample from a library, contacted with a disease target uh, to identify those compounds that can bind the, to the target. So it's not in a computer. This is happening in, in the lab. So how, how exactly do you manage to identify the molecule that actually binds to the target. So to take the very simplistic example, you have a cancer cell, and the cancer cells, they want to uh, to stain growth, they, don't, they, they want to be immortal, they don't want to die. So that's the first thing they need to achieve, and then they just want to keep on growing, so divide and grow. And in order for cancer cells to do that, they need to reprogram the, um, the uh, you, could see, you could say, the, the genetic apparatus. Uh, and that means that they will start to express certain proteins that allows them to not die and just keep on dividing. And what we try to achieve, we and others that look for, for new medicines for treatment of cancer, is those enzymes, those uh, proteins that these cancer cells produce that allow them to achieve this, could we block those? Mm. If we could block those, then we could block the cancer cell from either being immortal or keeping on uh, growing. So what we do is we take these disease targets. This is physical, uh, biological protein material. And then we take a droplet, a sample from our library, and we contact the tube. And if we have one billion, so in milliard, one billion different molecules in our test tube, most of the molecules cannot bind the target. They can just be washed out. But the few molecules that do bind to the target, the 0.001% or the thousands of molecules that can bind out of a billion, they stick, we can then isolate those, and the feature that we have in our screening is that we have all the molecules attached to a piece of DNA. And the DNA functions as a barcode, such that when we sequence the DNA, then we get information about what is the structure of this small molecule. So this allows us to do what you saw at the end of, of the video, travel through a lot of molecules very quickly to identify those that are active, sequence the DNA, all the DNA sequences are fed into our computers, translated into structural information, and we know what the active molecules are. And this technology is, of course, very well uh, patent? Yeah, I mean, we have, uh, we have 11 patent families. Uh, we have 200 patents that have been granted in different uh, countries, and that's been important uh, in terms of deal-making also in the past uh, mm. to get the, the many deals. And uh, perhaps one last question uh, about the Roar Gamma T uh, project. Uh, there are a few products out there one of them is Vitae, as you have mentioned a few times, and also Glaxo, I think, has one, ESCO. Uh, what is your, what's the, your advantage compared to them, theirs? Yeah, so, so I mean, uh, Vitae Pharmaceuticals uh, was the first one being successful in uh, human clinical trials, phase one studies, where they showed that uh, it's safe which is very good, even at high doses. They could also demonstrate in a phase one slash two, so a crossover where they have patients. Um, they could show that they actually saw good efficacy. 
the problem for them was that at higher doses, they saw an increase in certain liver enzymes. Mm. And they have studied this and they have claimed that this is not due to the mechanism of action, but probably related to the specific compound they have. So what they have done now is they have nominated a backup compound that is now being moved forward. Um, and there's so much belief in this field that uh, they ended up becoming acquired by uh, Allergen, as you probably mm. know, for $600 million. Um, I think they have a good program, for sure. Uh, they are a competitor to us. They are ahead of us. And that's another reason why we want to partner the program, because we need financial muscle to move yeah. our program uh, much quicker forward. And then the final one was the GSK. Uh, GSK, they are actually only developing a topical uh, uh, medication right now because they failed in the um, systemic, the tablet-based uh, variant. Okay. And our me uh, the, the molecule we have works orally, so it works tablet-based, oh, yeah. and we have seen the same efficacy as you can achieve with antibodies. So we think we have a good position, but we are clearly a clear number two uh, right now, and we need to uh, move quickly. Well, I think our time is up. Okay, thank you, Marcos. Thank you, Alex. <laughs> thank you. Uh, Ten-minute break, and then Miris Holdings next on stage.